Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So I apologize for not posting for a few days. I've been working really hard to get this game finished uh, that I'm about to do a tutorial on. So I apologize for that, but all the videos will be done today, and then I'm going to be posting them every other day. I think I have like three or four of them, so expect that for about the next week as my regular uploads. Now for this game that I'm going to be doing a tutorial on, it is a side-scroller. So I'll show you... Uh, a little bit of it right now just a sneak peek this isn't all of it this is like halfway through it you can see we have a little guy he runs down the screen there's a saw that appears or like there'll be another obstacle and then he either has to jump over it or if it's an obstacle that he can duck under he'll have to duck under it now you'll see that it continually gets faster so as time progresses it gets faster and therefore it gets more difficult uh, because it's going to take longer to jump over stuff and yeah so that's pretty much how the game works it's not done yet obviously this is just a little sneak peek for you guys to see okay so that's what i'm going to be showing you right now so before we even get started with uh any of the code there is something that we need to download so i have a bunch of images there that i was using so just to make it easier for you guys i uh ran open up a little github here i'll leave a link to it down in the description below uh just go ahead go to the page it'll look just like this click clone or download the little green button and just click download zip uh, once you do that just extract the zip so I'll even show you guys just to make sure there's no confusion it's gonna say side scroller just drag that off to your desktop and then inside this folder here there is something called a starter file which is what I'm in right now so you can open that up and you're gonna work from this file so this just ensures that we're not gonna have any issues loading up any images uh, and I have a bit of code in the starter file just to start us off so that's not going to take too long to uh, to copy down some of the complex stuff I have here. And like all these numbers here, you don't want to type those out. So I just put them in the starter file. Okay, so you can see here, I'll just go through what I have in the starter file really quickly. And then we'll move on to the new code and getting the background to start scrolling. So pretty much uh, we have our imports up here, pretty self-explanatory. We're going to be using Pi game for this game. Uh, width and height of the screen. This is just because the height of the background is 447. You could change this if you'd like. And then we have... Our background image, which is here, and then we have our clock, which is going to set up uh, so that we can have we can change the FPS as we move. So the way that I actually increase the uh, speed of the game is by incre increasing the speed of the uh, FPS. So that way we don't have to change the velocity of our character and of our um, of our background. We just change one property, and I'll get into that in a minute. Then I have this player class and there's a ton of stuff in here in terms of like loading in the images and the player jumping and so on. Uh, so pretty much all I did in here is I did all the character animation uh, because realistically all that's happening with the character is it's not actually moving on the screen. He's just either jumping up or down or he's jumping or he's, uh, what do you call it? He's sliding down the screen, right? So he doesn't actually end up moving right or left. Uh, he's just gonna be moving up or sliding down. So we wanna make it look like that. So I've done all the animation here for you because it is pretty tedious to get it down uh, and I've made it as good as I can. Um, it does look a little bit slow at the beginning in my opinion, but this this game isn't for like, we're not going to be releasing it professionally or anything. So it's fine if it looks like that for now, this is just for learning. Uh, yeah, all the images we load up here, this massive list, um, I think it has like 56, no, it has 106 <laughs> numbers in here or 108 numbers in here this is just for jump our uh, character jumping so we can get him to jump at the uh, exactly correct speed uh, so that it looks proper so i did that for you so you guys don't have to copy this out and then yeah so that's about it for the starter file okay so now let's get into actually coding so we want to make a scrolling background which means pretty much all the objects on our screen are going to be standing still pretty well and our background is going to be moving left so it makes it look like we're moving right so the first thing we have to do and this is what we always do when we're setting up a new game we're just going to do our main loop so we'll say while run down here and then inside this loop i always like to just start with my event loop so for event in pi game dot event dot get and then we start with if event dot type equals equals pi game dot quit like this then we want to quit the game so we're gonna do pi game dot quit and then simply quit like this and we can just do actually before we do all that let's say do this run equals false so we don't run into any errors then after this i think that's all we need for the event loop right now 
And now we're going to get into our background. So at the top of uh, our starter file here, you can see I've already set up two variables for us. We have background x uh, and then background x2. So these two variables are going to keep track of the x position of two different images. Now the way that our background is going to move is just by moving the background image. So we're going to continually blit the background image moving left um, at a certain speed. So we need two images so that way uh, it never goes blank on the screen. And you'll see what I mean once we actually get into it. So just copy this down for now. So what we need to do here is we just need to actually, we'll start off by just setting a variable up here. I'm going to call this speed. Set this equal to uh, say 30 for right now. And then we're going to do our FPS in here. So we'll just do clock dot tick and then speed like that. So that this way it's going to go at the the speed of our uh, of our variable, which we're going to change as we move on. Now we want to move our background back every uh, every frame. So we're going to say bgx minus equal. And I just like to use 1.4. If you want it to go faster, then you can modify that number to make it larger or smaller accordingly. And then 1.4 here, we're going to move the other background image at the same speed. The only difference is they're going to be at different positions. Uh, and you'll see how it works in a second. Now we're going to do a little if statement here. We're going to say if bgx is less than bg dot get underscore width and bg just stands for background, by the way, times negative one, then we are going to set our background of x equal to bg dot get underscore width. And there we go for that. One. Now we're going to do another if statement and we're going to copy this. Actually, I'll paste it down here, save us some time. And all we're going to do is replace all the BGX uh, with twos like this. So there we go. So the way that this is going to work is our first background image is going to start at uh, zero, zero, right? So it's going to start at zero, zero, and then it's going to start moving backwards until eventually it gets to the negative width of the background. So if our background, for example, is 900 pixels long, then once the X value is at negative 900, that means that it's officially off the screen. We can't see any part of it. Uh, so we're going to reset it so that it goes to positive uh, background width. So that means that it's at like kind of the end of the screen, like it's off the screen to the right side. Sorry, I wish I had a visual for you guys uh, to do this, but I'm trying to explain it the best I can. Now we have another background object that's going to be right behind this object. So once this one gets to the end of the screen, this one is just going to be coming back on to the screen so that it's going to keep uh, looking like it's moving. And I'll run this in just a second to show you. I want to make sure that I have everything here. So now what we need to do is we need to just set up a function. And this function is just going to draw our background and all that stuff onto the screen. Uh, if you follow my other tutorials, I just like to call it redraw window. And all the drawing that we do in this program, I'm going to be doing in this function so that if we have any issues with drawing, we know where to go back to and we don't have to look through a ton of code. It's a really good way to do things. If you're writing a game, uh, all your drawings should happen in one place. Okay, so we're going to draw our background at the background X position and then zero. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other background. We're going to do background and then BG X two zero. And then we're just going to update our screen. So pygame dot display dot update. Now, if I run the program, uh, running into an issue here. Oh, that's because I didn't call this function. My bad. So up here, I'm just going to call redraw window. And now let's check it. Hmm. What seems to be the issue here? One second. Oh, run equals false. <laughs> Sorry about that. Run equals true. All right. Now let's see. There we go. Now we have a scrolling background. Now you can see right now uh, the background is going to be moving at a constant speed. It's not getting any faster. Uh, that's what we're going to cover right now. But you can see it's pretty cool. We have a scrolling background. And if we wait for a second, you'll see when the other background starts moving on. Now, just due to the nature of this background, uh, the way it is, you can see where the other background kind of comes onto the screen. You can see right here, it's like a little bit cut off. Doesn't bother me too much just because this is like a starter game. We're not going to be using this for anything super serious. But if this was bothering you, then you'd have to line it up so that this background perfectly aligned with this one or just use a different background that's constant, doesn't change as much as this one, if that makes sense. Okay, so now let's get the background moving uh, faster. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're just going to increment our speed uh, 
variable like this. Now, the way to make sure that it's going to go faster, um, the same no, no matter what machine it's working on, is just by running a timer event. So the way that we set a timer event is just by doing this. We're going to say pygame dot timer dot set underscore timer like this. In here, we're going to type user event plus one and then comma 500. So this is in milliseconds. So this means every half second, we're going to increase the speed by calling this event. So what this timer actually does is just here, you can see we have for event in pygame.event.get. It actually triggers this user event one to be true every half a second. So to be able to check when this event is happening, we have to do it within our event loop here. So we're going to say if event dot type equals equals, and then we're just going to type what we have there, user event plus one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say speed plus equals one like that. Now, let me make sure that everything's looking good here. I'm actually just going to move this clock tick down to the bottom of our while loop because that's where it should be. So make sure you do that. And then we're going to run the program running into an issue. Pygame has no module timer. Oh, sorry. This should not be timer. This should just be time. My bad. There we go. And now you can see if we uh, watch this, it should start to progressively get faster. All right. Watching and... There we go. It seems like it's moving faster. Okay, pretty good. So that means that's all working. So now let's get into the next part. So we have our scrolling background, but now we need to add our character to the background. So this is pretty straightforward. So we've already set up this class here. I've set this up for you. It's called player uh, and it has one method in it, which is the draw method. So we just need to create an instance of our player. I'm just going to call my guy runner and I'm going to say runner is equal to uh, player. Let's give him an X, Y width and height. Uh, the X, what should we set for his X? Um, let's see here. Let's give him 400 for the X. Uh, and then 313. Actually, we're not going to do 400. That's too far on the screen. We'll do 200. 313. This is what I determined was like kind of exactly at ground level. So it looked like his feet were running on the ground. And then he's a 64 by 64 sprite. So we'll use that. All right, we have our runner now. Now we need to draw a runner. So after we draw the background, we're going to draw a runner by just doing runner.draw. Let's put win in here. This is the name of our window. And there we go. That should be good. Let's run the program. And there we are. You can see that we have our runner and he is running on the screen. That's what it looks like at least. Now we need to make him be able to jump up and down and slide. Because you can see at the moment I'm clicking keys, I'm clicking space, up, up arrow key, down arrow key, and he's not moving downwards. Now another uh, interesting thing here is as the background gets faster, so does he. And that's because uh, obviously if our ground looks like it's moving faster, faster, then his feet are going to be having to move faster. So that's why we use that, that clock speed that I showed you at the beginning. Okay, so now let's make our character uh, move. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're just going to say keys equals, and this is what I did in my other Pygame tutorial too. It's a really good way so that if the a person hits more than one key at once, uh, it's going to register properly. Because if we just tried to do the checking in the event loop here, if they tried to hit uh, two keys at the same time, then they weren't they wouldn't both trigger. So say for example, if you hit the up arrow key and the right arrow key. Um, depending on which one you hit like a little bit faster, that's going to be the one that triggers. So it's going to be delayed if it makes sense. So just do it this way. Say if keys and then in here, I game dot K underscore space. So space bar, space bars hit or uh, keys. And we're just, I'm just doing this so that the person can use either the up arrow key or the uh, space bar K underscore up like this. Okay. And then in here, all we're going to do is we're going to say if not runner dot jumping. So this just means if our runner is not already jumping, then we will allow him to jump. It's just so we can't be jumping while we're already jumping in midair. Pretty straightforward. And we'll just say runner dot jumping equals true like that. Straightforward enough because I've already set up the class. Now we'll say if keys pygame dot key down in here. K underscore down. Then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say if not runner dot sliding, then we're simply going to say runner 
dot sliding equals true like that so now same thing here if our runner is sliding when we hit the down arrow key uh we're not going to let him slide again pretty straightforward there okay so let's uh test this out now make sure everything's working all right let me click the up arrow key and there we go our player jumps into the air now that's what i'm talking about with the animation it looks a little bit slow right um the reason i had to do this is because the background doesn't move too fast so i want the character to be in the air for long enough to be able to get over top of an obstacle that would possibly be sliding out the screen at this speed uh the sliding same thing here i get him to slide for a decent amount of time to make sure that he would be able to get underneath that obstacle and we might play with some of those numbers as we move through the tutorial if we find that it's too slow or it's too long and yeah so there we go and i think that's gonna uh do it for this first video so if you guys enjoyed the first video and uh, it helped you out and you're able to follow along please help me out by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel and the next video will be out in what day is it today's sunday so it'll be out on tuesday and then every other day from there i will post the rest of the videos all right so i'll see you in the next video